a very special episode of Headphones Neil Reviews and the very first one of 2024. So for this particular episode, um, much like I mentioned a couple weeks ago, it's not necessarily a full episode of stuff. I'm not necessarily doing a pointed episode of certain things I've been watching and playing, but I thought because I have some content, I didn't really want to wait till later to put out this review. Just and not let it really build up. So I thought I would get this quick episode and update out. So um, I know, I want to say a couple months ago, I mentioned that I wanted to finish watching the uh, TV show Vikings. So I did have a chance to get through season five, part one or A or whatever, however it's listed on Amazon Prime via the, I think, I'm not sure if it's on Amazon Prime or via the AMC Plus channel, but I guess season five is broken up into two parts. So I finished watching the first part. We've got, I've gotten to the point where all of the sons of Ragnar are fighting against each other. We have um, Duke Rolo, a Ragnar's brother, coming back, and that's kind of the cliffhanger for the, uh, or I guess the mid-season cliffhanger or season five, middle of season five finale or whatever. So a good catch up there. I kind of remember some of the fighting and stuff, but I don't know that I got through um, all of it. So um, one of those things where um, now that I'm catch it, caught up on that, I'm, I can move into the second half of season five. Um, one of the things that I'm loving about all of it is the switching between languages, the accents, the scenery and the interactions and all of that stuff. So I think I'm definitely going to finish off the show now. So the rest of season five and season six. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, as of this episode, I finally had a fin chance to finish playing Duke Nukem 3D Atomic Edition. So much like the original Doom and two Doom 2 that I've finally played and completed over the past couple of years, um, I finally had a chance to finish playing this retro game and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I can see how it has its roots in games like um, the original Duke Nukem as far as um, story, the game improvements in gameplay versus, you know, games like um doom and doom one <clears throat> so i know that doom so doom one released in 1993 i think and then doom 2 released in 94 duke nukem 3d released in 1996 so it's a good progression of you know level design and weapons and things like that um but overall if you told me that like i just said like duke nukem 3d released in 96 I could would have sworn it released at the same time as like Doom 2 because it has level improvements and you know good weapons and all that but but with the introduction of the Y axis and like moving around the graphics seem to be worse than what I see in Doom 1 and 2 even though in general if you're not if you're only moving left and right it's kind of the same thing so um that's the only thing I kind of didn't like is the graphics felt kind of off and worse than Doom but I did like the weapon, like the moving in, you know, a circular, you have a 360 degree field of uh, motion for movement. So you kind of overlook the graphics aspect. Um, but I will say that the level designs were um, felt much more expansive. You can see how they made improvements on, on the uh, polygonal um, design of stuff. So it's still blocky and squared off and stuff like that for the level design, but not quite as noticeable as a game like Doom where even though it stands out they do did what they can but um, <clears throat> they kind of improved on that sort of stuff so overall I had a good time playing it so even though the story and the thing with women and all that kind of stuff is of its time and era <clears throat> overall the story and what the gameplay does was overall fun and good so if you've never played it, I definitely recommend playing it, but if you've played it, I am um, curious to see what everyone thinks of it. Did you like it, dislike it, what they could have done better or worse or anything like that. So it's to that point where I'm actually curious to see if I can play Duke Nukem Forever somewhere. I am going to look to see if it's uh, there's someone you know made a port where you can play it on Android like I did with Duke Nukem 3D and Doom. But if not, no worries, but or no worries on my end, but... 
I mean, it was interesting enough to play through the whole game. Um, the only thing I didn't really like was the alien design. Because when we get into the boss fights, they have that weird, like, toothy grin where it's like an early version of Venom, but not quite. So it's like they're, and they have perpetual laughing face, I guess. So that was the only thing that I would probably want to say negative about it overall. But as far as, like, gameplay goes, um, I enjoyed it. The graphics were good enough for the time, but the level design uh, stands up very well, especially when you can do things like... You have a jetpack, you have a hollow duke, you can go underwater. Um, jumping around is good, you have exploding canisters, you have a lot of interactable elements, so things like you can have, you can uh, sing karaoke, you can interact with the phones. So it's almost like an early version of Doom 3, but without all the graphics and 3D rendering technology. And there's a little bit of like lighting effects, but you know, lighting effects for the time. So it's almost one of those things where I can see why they didn't make Doom 3 based on Duke Nukem because it would have felt like a Duke Nukem clone and they waited to release Doom 3 when they did. But I could, well, kind of wanted to see how they would have made a Doom 3 game on the Duke Nukem engine to the point where it would have almost been like reskin um, Duke Nukem and all the aliens into the Doom characters and um, Essentially, you can have a game right there because, you know, you have the flying um, metal exploding objects that are kind of like caco demons. The, um, you have um, the, some of the characters that are kind of like the um, imps and you have um, the boss fights that could be easily translated into a cyber demon. Um, and then you have like the rat, like rats moving around so you could easily translate that into like a spider mastermind, especially with things like the octobrain. Um, and then I want to say you have the various, you have like the lizard characters that you can easily translate into, um, like the shotgunners and machine gunners and all the various other characters. So what if it feels like, and I say this not designed everything, anything, but it, you could just as easily do a reskin of Duke Nukem into a Doom game and you have a Doom 3. So overall worth it. So for that, I do have a link in the show notes for my gameplay so you can follow along. It does include the first four episodes. I didn't see a way to play the fifth one on um, um, Android. So if I find a way, I'll try and play it, but I didn't see a way initially. So there's that. As far as other stuff I've been watching, not too much. I had a chance to watch Last Action Hero, or not Last um, True Lies again. I was going to watch Commando, but I realized I saw that a couple of years ago and I haven't seen True Lies in even longer. So, um, rewatch that. Overall, good. Um, I still like the movie. I've always liked it. So, um, can't really say too much new stuff um, of the movie there aside from. Um, the interactions between like um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jamie Lee Curtis were good, between him and uh, Tom Arnold and all of that were good. I didn't realize Eliza Dukshu was in the movie. Um, so overall, just a good time, an Arnold Schwarzenegger film of its time. So watch that. I had a chance to watch the latest Dave Chappelle um, Netflix special. I think it's called The Dreamer or just Dreamer. So I'm still a fan of his there. So um watch that so that's um with that that's really all i have for this particular review so um i am gonna give um the doom mod my house a try um i guess it's one of those things where it's a doom mod where it's like a haunted house for, kind of thing and you, once you beat one level you get into the next hot level of the haunted house or something so I was thinking about doing not necessarily a long play, but just play as long as I can, see how I can get through at least the first level to see what it's all about, and kind of just play through it and see how it goes. Um, I don't know if I would keep playing it to see how long it is, but um, seeing some of the gameplays that I saw on like YouTube, it looks like it's a, maybe a couple hours or so, so maybe I might give it a shot, but I'm going to at least play through the first level of the, or like the first house level to see how it is. Um, just for interest sake and then um, take it from there. So that's all there is for this particular episode and review update and all that stuff. So um, like I said, I'm still on uh, podcast break. So um, all the links to past episodes are up on the uh, website along with links to the YouTube channel, ways to support and subscribe to the show and all of that at headphonesneal.reviews. Gameplay videos are up on YouTube at youtube.com slash patelin01. 
Um, the website has links to all the social media sites I'm on and all that. So thanks for the subscription. Thanks for tuning into this particular episode. And until next time.